Hey YouTube, in this video I want to talk about how to stop doing things that hurt you, by which I mean behaviors that you know you probably shouldn't be doing, that probably you suspect will make you feel good, but you know actually won't. Um, and you end up in a kind of loop around these behaviors. That sounds abstract, but let me tell you what I mean with an example. So for me, there are a couple of things that I know are bad for me. So drinking coffee or any kind of caffeine or eating sugar. Both of these things are clearly bad for me. As in, I don't just mean health-wise, I mean they make me feel actively bad. And still, I find myself in these loops of, well, just this once, or I know I shouldn't, but it's a treat. It's a special occasion. It's not fair that I don't feel good. Um various reasons like this and it's tricky because short term like let's say seconds to minutes or low hours they might feel good so coffee might feel good for half an hour to an hour chocolate is nice while you're eating it but the long-term consequences are always for me negative and much more negative than the positive I got from them so here's how I normally find myself in this in this loop and I get stuck and I'm going to show you how to get out of this loop afterwards. So the loop is, I notice that I want to have, let's say, a coffee. I then start yelling at myself in the sense of, oh, you know you shouldn't have a coffee. Oh, you know you'll just feel bad. Oh, we've been here before. Why are you such a loser? Blah, 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 blah. There's so many versions of this voice that, um, that tell me off. But then if I look more closely... I see a kind of, well, first of all, what I see is that the, the thing that is being yelled at doesn't like being yelled at. So the more I yell at myself, the more I want to have a coffee, the more I kind of get myself stuck in this back and forth between I want to, but I'm yelling at myself. And the thing that's yelling doesn't seem to understand that it's just making things worse. But there's a second order noticing and yelling that goes on which seems to be sensible, but is actually a manifestation of the same loop. And what I mean by that is, when I catch myself yelling at myself, oh, you shouldn't, oh, you've been here before, why are you such a loser? There's another voice that says, you really shouldn't yell at yourself. You really should be kind to yourself. You really should just stop doing all this. Like, can you see the sleep you're in? Look at, look at how much you're yelling at yourself. It's not helping. Blah, blah, blah. Now, do you see what's going on here? I'm yelling at the voice that's yelling in an attempt to get myself to stop yelling. All I'm doing is yelling. Now, if we separate out some of these factors, so there is a thing that is being yelled at, and there is a thing that's yelling. The thing that's being yelled at, you could say, is the thing that actually does things. It's the thing that in the moment wanted the chocolate, perhaps. The thing that does the yelling, you might call a judge voice in my mind that thinks it's helping. And all I'm doing when I yell at the yeller, so to speak, when I judge the judge, is that I strengthen that thing. I strengthen the thing that yells. But I already know that that's not helping. I've worked with many coaching clients on this, and I've seen it in myself, that the way to get yourself to... to get yourself to... the way to navigate around this is to ease off the pressure of the yelling thing, the judging thing. If you stop judging, the system tends to release in some way. There's a release of tension, there's a release of this stuckness. And this is really obvious in things like creative output and productivity, but it's particularly true in this um, stuck cycle around I know I shouldn't, but um, response. So when you yell at yourself, oh, stop yelling at yourself. You really should be kind to yourself. You're strengthening that same voice. But you don't realize that in the moment. The thing that's yelling doesn't know it's yelling at itself. And you can just keep going up this, this weird tennis match, this back and forth, this yelling at yourself game, and get completely stuck by doing this. So you just go back and forth, back and forth. And all you're doing is strengthening it. It's getting more powerful because it can't get itself to shut up. It can't make itself stop yelling. But that's what you want to do, right? You want to get this thing to stop yelling and leave the system alone in some sense. So what do you do? Well, what I do is I 
get myself to just notice that this whole game is going on. Oh, look, I appear to be yelling at myself. How interesting. And then don't try and do anything about it. Don't try to fix it. Don't try to change it. Don't try to do anything. Just notice. Because anything that is intervening or trying or fixing or whatever is just using that same yelling, judging voice. It's that same game. It's that same tennis match, the same loop. So there's the paradox. When any move that you can make is exacerbating the situation, the only move you can make is to not make a move. And the way you do that is to just notice that this thing is going on. It's like the, the and I date myself quite well here, but the, the scene in the film War Games with Matty Broderick where the, the computer, um, the Whopper, recognizes that playing a thermonuclear war game is silly because the only winning move is not to play. There's no winning move if it always ends in mutually assured destruction. Thanks, Siri. No. Need to turn Siri off next time. So the only winning move is not to play. And noticing is the way to not make a move, to just notice. And then this, this noticing game can go iteratively. So I notice that I'm yelling at myself. I notice that I'm trying to intervene in this. I notice that I'm noticing. And just keep going down the, the, the trail of noticing until you get to a point where the whole thing resolves itself. So this is a tricky area for a lot of people because we really want to improve. We really want to get better. But the thing that wants to improve is largely that shouty voice, and it can't improve itself. If it wanted to improve, it would be already. It would be improved. The thing that transforms, the thing that actually goes through change is the thing that's being yelled at. And that does that by not yelling at it, by just letting it do its thing. So all we can do is interrupt that yelling, forcing, trying pattern and trust in the change that happens beneath that. We can set intention. We can say, I want to go over there, but I'm not going to yell at myself that I must go over there. How are you you're such a loser? You're not over there yet. Oh, you should be kind to yourself that we're not over there. All of that is noise. All of that is interference. So just noticing all those different kinds of looping interference is enough to stop it from happening. You take a step back, you zoom out, and then the system coordinates itself. And you'll find that the issue goes away. You suddenly you don't want the thing anymore. Suddenly you are moving. And it's much easier and more free. So I just wanted to kind of riff on this idea. I will say a lot more about it. This is the first time I've really gone here. And there's a lot more to say, and to say it more eloquently as well. Um, as much as anything else, this has been a good way for me to get back into making YouTube videos. I expect that no one will watch this one, and that's fine. Um, but just to kind of plant a seed of this idea that I'll be talking about more, here it is. So thanks for watching, and yeah, see you next time.